everyone included, is a vision for the future of healthcare based on a framework of mutual respect and inclusivity. We believe everyone should be respected for the expertise they can bring to discussions about the future of healthcare. Here are some of our stories. So the funny thing is I said just today, like I woke up thinking maybe I need to go full vegan again this morning. But then after swimming, I smelled in and out, so that happened. So. <laughs> I think that was Daniel Siegel, if you remember, when he came to medics. He talked about integration and being a whole person. And there's so many different elements that define who we are. And my cholesterol is one, my weight is another, happiness is another. Mindfulness and finding your center and peace is another. Like, you have to balance that all together. You know? and, uh, and that's different for each person. You know? um, and it just happens that certain things, like weight, are visible on the surface. And there are other things, like those invisible illnesses, Brit, that, you know, about that aren't on the surface. But it doesn't mean they're any less important to who we are as people. It's interesting because it's like the visible ones are what medicine pays attention to. Which is why I think mental illness, for instance, gets the short end of the straw. Yeah. What was interesting for me is I gained 15 pounds before I was diagnosed with epilepsy, and then afterwards, when I started medication, I uh, dropped almost 30 pounds in about five months. Wow. Um, the 15 I'd never had before, which is very much in line with the development of the disease, and then 30 because of the medication, and it made me so sick. At one point, about three or four months, a few people started asking me, um, we're worried about you. You're getting so skinny. And I, I've been trying to tell these same people the whole time how sick I was feeling every day. And I was like, you should be worried. But no, I don't have an eating disorder. Right. Like, I am struggling with these medications. And, you know, I'm so sick right now. Julie, I'm really curious about the diagnosis process with you. And how much of that do you feel like you were getting blamed? Or either laziness, laziness and sort of this, like these sorts of things. And I just thought I somehow lost my willpower. I didn't even think of it as a sleep problem. I just thought, what? Where did my drive go? Like, where did Julie go? And then I went to a primary care doctor. She told me that that might be average sleepiness. <laughs> and Waking up in strange places. So when you heard that, that, that it was an average sleepiness, mm-hmm. did you yeah. feel better? Because um, no, you didn't because have I, a serious illness? I didn't, at that point I didn't think she was right. Although it's, it's so invisible, so it's hard to measure with my sleepiness. But she said, well, sometimes when I'm driving to work, I have to pull over to yeah. get a coffee too. And I just had the slightest voice inside me that thought, I don't think we're talking about the same sickness. You bring up a valuable point with invisible illnesses and so forth. Is that, and this gets talked about on Twitter so much, I think, recently, too. Like with me being in the ER last month, um, is that either primary care, they're not educated to deal with either invisible illnesses or people that present with you know these intense symptoms who are very well educated and obviously know something is wrong with their body. I think our healthcare is not structured to support uh, the need of chronic illness patients in the ER mm-hmm. because we end up there so often. Mm-hmm. And so it's either written off as you're looking for drugs um, or you're depressed or you're having a hard time. You know, I've had them sit me down and say, how are things at home? You know, are you okay? Is that why you're really here? And then actually end up hospitalized, you know, because of a very serious commission the following day. I, I really think that these self-tracking devices are going to start to give us a window into the secret lives of patients with chronic conditions. And only by secret, I mean secret from the healthcare system because you know the patient themselves knows know, knows what they're living through um, but the system doesn't have the numbers <laughs> what about I hear patients will bring in a whole binder of data for a doctor and they go I don't want to look at it get it away they think the patient somehow you know mm-hmm. put it together capable. like a lawyer like of like this is my case we brought it in yeah it's not even though if it's all they just like I don't even want to look at all that and that we need to be so I always am trying to tell advocates to be really um 
prioritize their time very carefully because you get so little. I think, you know, if you write down 10 things that you want to ask, have someone else look at that list and find yes. the three questions that are yes. most important because that's maybe all you'll get. That's a good point. And I'll provide you the provider perspective on that, which is because I know that we have so little time, part of it is I know that I'm not going to be able to read through all that data during this visit that we have. So I want to focus my time on what we can practically do together, which I don't know if that's right or wrong. I think that's something the system has done to us in creating 15-minute doctor visits. There was an article from a rheumatologist recently that you and I disagreed on that, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I thought, and it was really interesting. Um, because there, there, the sentence in particular that I think was the biggest bone of contention was this rheumatologist saying how I read it as the patient is unable to prioritize their problems. That these patients who come in with really complex cases, so they're coming in that it's sort of like chicken little sky is falling about everything. But the part that I liked about it was him saying, therefore, they're all important. And that was how I read it, that the doctor needs to listen to everything with an equal ear and listen to that story and help the patient distill it down. I thought that was the interesting point. Next week on Everyone Included. Being told when I was a teenager that I was going to be in a wheelchair by the time I was 25, I said, I'll be damned if that's going to happen. Yeah. You know? And then the other thing that makes it difficult, I, we just, I think in, in healthcare medicine, we, we we're so driven to have this culture of negativity and fear, mm -hmm. like that we should change the behavior because we're scared that something's bad will happen. That was one of the, uh, the things that caused us to actually to start the healthcare hashtag project. Uh, our initial goal was to lower the barrier of entry for providers.